hey, before we get in this episode, can you do us a favor? We go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We ring that notification bell. And if you would, give this video a like. Well, enough of that mumbo jumbo. Let's get to the episode. Let's talk developmentally speaking, glow up, and connecting through wrestling. Hey everybody, I'm Morty. And I'm Brian. And on today's episode of Connecting Through Wrestling, we have Jeremiah Plunkett. How's it going? Man, it's going as good as it can be expected, man. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Do you want me to call you Jeremiah or Plunky, or what do you want me to call you? Whichever you prefer, man. Okay, Whichever all right. I like Plunky. I mean, I'm Morty. That's Plunky. And it works out. Good. So I'm going to ask you uh, the same question I've ever but ask everybody. It's, uh, it's, well, what made you get into wrestling? So, uh, and it's probably a cliche to answer, I've always been a fan, right? Um, I was a fan from as long back as I can remember. I became a dedicated fan uh, watching the dying days of USWA. Um, I, I remember flipping through the channels, and USWA would come on about either 11 or 12. I can't remember. Uh, so after cartoons, it goes straight into wrestling. And I remember watching a music video of Jerry Lawler throwing a fireball. And it was, for a little 10-year-old me, the most fascinating thing I've ever seen in my life. And it always stuck in my head. Fast forward, I played football for uh, five years and not exactly the tallest human being in the world, so no college scholarships came my way. Uh, well, a couple private colleges, but you'd still have to pay like 10 grand a year after that. <laughs> we're, we're middle class at best, so that wasn't happening. Um, so uh, I got into wrestling and in, in, in hopes legitimately of learning to throw a fireball because I thought that would be in wrestling school. <laughs> right. You know, it is a lot of fun to throw fireballs. I've I've actually yeah. thrown a few. Um, uh, that that's I've taken a few it, of them to the in face. It's my bag at all times. Nice, nice, nice. It's good. <laughs> Have you? I haven't seen it. Have you got to use it in the NWA yet? Not in the NWA, no oh, sir. Oh gosh, you got to. Turn crazy Steve in a casket match with it though. That's fun times. There you oh, go. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> that's exciting. So, where did you uh, start training at? Um. So this was around 2005, so while the internet was prevalent, it wasn't like it is now where I could just Google wrestling schools and have 8,000 things come up. Uh, and I didn't even think to do that. So i just go to independent shows, and as guys were making their entrance, they'd be like, hey, you guys train wrestlers? You guys train wrestlers? And we'd try to stand out, because you know most wrestling fans do not dress up for the occasion. So we'd be like in you know a nice shirt and a sports coat sitting front row at a wrestling show. Obviously, we stood out from the get-go. <laughs> nice. Um, and finally, a guy. So you say you work with Supreme Wrestling. Well, they used to be NWA Supreme, correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Um, we are you familiar with NWA Main Event? Uh, I've heard of it. Yes. In okay. the Middle Tennessee area. Um, okay. Yeah. Me and Mike, me and Mike Woods, buzzed up in the Outlaw League. Hundred are the three guys we trained. Um, and uh, come to find out, Lee lived thirty minutes. No, not about thirty minutes. What the heck? 15 minutes from the house so i'd go over there set up his ring in his backyard and i got trained in the guy's backyard by three former uh, or three nwa main event talents well that's cool that's really cool oh yeah, yeah. Uh, i got to be buddies with lee because we trained two or three times a week mm -hmm. but i got to be buddies with lee so even when we didn't train he said as long as you set up the ring man you can train any time so i get out of college get off my shoot job and I'd go over there and set up a ring by myself at Ooh. least for the first three times Lee helped after that Ooh. and then uh, I'd train until 11 and repeat it all again wow I've, I've set up a ring by myself once it's it tiresome it takes a while <laughs> so respect. luckily if I remember right it was an easy like snap together high spots ring there was no like cable you'd have to work around oh yeah um, okay yeah, that, those cable ones are really hard. Uh, I, I, I'm talking, yeah, I, I, the one I set up was a Mike Samples ring, so it, mm. <laughs> it was yeah. uh, heavy duty, had the cables and all that. Um, yeah. But um, le, that's, you know, that's part of it. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't think you, you hear a lot of uh, a lot of people nowadays that are just starting out saying, uh, I help, help set up a ring, let alone set it up by themselves, yeah, unfortunately. You know, it's, it's sad. <laughs> Um, but so, um, was that the first company you worked for? Actually, no. So, um, by the time training had 
had kind of completed for me. Lee was running a promotion uh, called American Championship Wrestling in Smyrna, Tennessee, and that's where I started. Um, if I remember right, everyone had kind of had a fallen out. You know, you know how a wrestling drama is. Everyone gets mad at the promoter at some point. So they'd had a falling out with NWA main event. Um, so I, I was working for Lee and then I, you know, went to move on and worked actually the opposition to NWA main event in Columbia for some guys like Shane Morton and Hot Rod Biggs and guys like that. I did some work for Burt Prentice and that was kind of my first year just going here and there trying to get my name out. So, how was how was it working these independents down where you were right after training? How long did you train before you started, you know, taking bookings? So, okay, so started training in February. Had my first match in July as a fill-in. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would not have debuted then. Somebody called out. I was actually in the main event of the first show I was in. But yeah, that sounds like cool, right? And in my mind, it was cool. American Championship Wrestling, regardless of the name, was kind of a hardcore fed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, my first match was, get ready for all these stipulations, um, six-man tornado tag, falls count anywhere hardcore match. Okay. It's like WCW in the year 2000. That's... <laughs> you ain't lying, yeah. <laughs> um, I was, this is even funnier, uh, the guy I was filling in was a, in a member of a group called the Black Stallions group of african-american gentlemen mm. and an 18 year old me mm. there you go uh, i'm wrestling yeah. lee Condry, uh a guy named white trash because of course uh and a guy named gq uh i was slammed in thumbtacks bled and took a double rock bottom through a roll of light tubes my first match and still took down the ring <laughs> Hell yeah. My <laughs> God. I nope. got all my death mount stuff out of the way early. <laughs> uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, I could say that I haven't done a lot of death match stuff. I've done, I've had a few stupid things I've done. Uh, had a, a picture frame broke over my head and ended up with a four inch piece of glass in my shin. I've had guitars bust over my head, stuff like that. But, you know, and being in Indiana, it's hard to it's it's you know uncommon to say yeah I don't do death matches because death matches are like the bread and butter of this state unfortunately unfortunately and it drives me up a wall um, but enough about what I think <laughs> so you started out your first match was a death match did it, did it deter you at all um not from wrestling but from knowing hey, this isn't my bag. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This isn't my thing, right? Right. Um, The two weeks after that, I was still picking light tube slivers out of my back, and Mm. I was like, nah, this sucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this this, this sucks. Um, So that I kind of tried to learn to wrestle a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) I I got into, uh, got really into, like, pure wrestling stuff after that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The total opposite way. I wasn't that great at it, but I, like, tried I remember in front of that same crowd, me and another like-minded guy goes, we'll get a pure wrestling rules match over. Mm. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. We thought we were going to, but we didn't. <laughs> That's awesome. You just get a pure wrestling match. <laughs> so where did you go after? So you did the death match thing and tried to do the pure yeah. wrestling. Where Did you leave this uh, promotion um, and then try other ventures? Just yeah, like, oh, so... Right. From there, uh, my Buzz Dub, who was one of my trainers as well, he had got me into uh, a company in Columbia, Tennessee, uh, that Shane Morton and, and Hot Rod Biggs and, and whatever worked in. Um, I was only there like two or three weeks, and Buzz ended up moving to Evansville. Uh, so I, here I am, a man on an island, don't really know anybody, uh, and I'm just getting beat up by veterans, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a guy named Lawrence, the sharp dressed man who would see how many chops he could hit on me during the match. Top we ever got was 33. Uh, <laughs> Did you say sharp dressed man? Yeah, Lawrence, the sharp dressed man. Lawrence, uh, I know a different sharp dressed man. He liked to throw chops too. Yeah. But he uh, must be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, after that, I think it was like maybe three weeks after Buzz left, the, the booker changed. And the promoter was trying to cut all the money and stuff like that. And so I was going to be about to be nowhere and have no connections, really, because I hadn't met anybody. I was just sitting in the corner quiet. 
Um, and Lawrence, strangely enough, went up to the booker and is like, hey, man, if you can keep this guy, you're barely paying him. If they were paying me, I can't even remember. But keep him because he, he goes, I make his chest bleed every week and he hasn't complained. He's he's tough. Like, keep him. There and they got me and they worked me. I'd worked two to three times. I, I was probably every mask gimmick they had. <laughs> <laughs> Um, including they would make you wear their boots no matter what size it was. So I've wore, I've wrestled in a size of size 15s and a pair of size nines. I'm a 12. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wrestling in a pair of nines. That would, oh. like, it would hurt to wrestle in nines and you would trip in 15s. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, rough. See, the pair of nines was the, uh, the Cuban assassin was the mask gimmick's name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't remember what the 15s were, but yeah. Did you, did you, did you end up stuffing, myself. You have stuff and paper in the 15s? Or anything to help? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I, I I know I wore multiple socks. Yeah, that's a great idea, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah I've, but I believe we might have done paper. We, we put something in there, I know, because it was like flop, 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 flop. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was a clown gimmick, it would it would have worked. Oh, it would have been perfect, man. Doink was already taken, though. I can't do it better than Matt Bourne. Right, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Nick Dinsmore did a close second, but uh, uh, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, and and the, and I'm sure at that point everybody had Doink on the card. I mean, even after Matt Bourne passed away, people still had Doink on their cards. Doink, Doink's still making the rounds here. I, I don't know. Yeah, Doink still makes the rounds up here. I don't know how, but really, yeah, <laughs> he's still getting booked. Yeah, it, ten years later. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's still getting booked. Uh, I, I, like, who else is getting booked that that shouldn't be like? Um, who's the guy that I can't even think? Ah, don't worry about it. I can't even think of who it was, who it was now. Max Moon. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of Max Moons running around Indiana. Around. A bunch of Max Moons all over the place. The, Patriots. Patriots. The, yeah. True. Yeah. The um, the first WWE CW uh, zombie. Yeah. Yeah, he gets booked up here quite a bit. <laughs> Like the actual guy who was the zombie? Yeah, the actual guy. He gets booked up here. All oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, 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 hey, that, cool. that's better than just some guy throwing on a hood and being like, I was this guy back in the day. What's that one? Is it the, the masked assassin? Is, or is that what it was? Brother. Is it the one from OVW? Who hung out at OVW a lot? Older guy? I think I know. I think that, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, as you can see on this tattoo, yeah. half assassin, half wrestling too. Right? It's kind of like yin and yang. I'm mm-hmm. always baby face, always heel. I'm up there one night, and the mass assassin brother, who's a sweet guy, but he comes up and he's wearing, he doesn't even wear an assassin mask. He's like has a cross on it or some weird stuff. And he's an older guy who I think popped out. I think Al just enjoyed him being around. Um, he goes, I see you got me on your arm. And I'm like, what? He goes, the assassin. I'm like, oh no, this is the original assassin. And he goes, yeah, me. I'm like, bro, Tom Renesto's dead and you're not Jody Hamilton. What are you talking about? <laughs> And he just kind of uh, walked away. I was, yeah. I was so confused <laughs> that he thought he could really pass that off. Oh, man. Some people are delusional, I, I, you know. <laughs> Wrestling brings the best out of people. <laughs> some, yeah, I know. Like, oh, And then you have people wearing masks to hide their identity for real because, oh, because they, they shouldn't be on shows. Who's That's, the guy in Indy that uh, we were going to run a show one time, and he just he started emailing. He's like, yeah, man, I'll make an event. And I'm like... He goes, I'll bring my girl. I was like, what? He wrestled on WCW. He's friends with Rip. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Dave the Rave. Dave the Rave. <laughs> stay, stay I'm away. not familiar with that name. Stay away from that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, Take it. <laughs> yeah, he was just like, yeah, I'll make an event. I'll bring my girl. Like, Then he started like sending pictures. <laughs> I don't know. We thought I was going to get a book. I mean, like started sending like promo pictures or no? I think he thought we were in the mirror picture. I think he thought we were an apartment then, wrestling fed. <laughs> but, and then like him and his old lady, I don't know. He just he was he wanted the main event, brother man. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> remember when that was in the back of wrestling magazines? Huh? Remember when that was in the back of wrestling magazines? Just apartment wrestling? Yeah. Like you'd read an Abner magazine, and all of a sudden it's like buy this apartment tape. I'm like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've, you know, being a big guy, I guess that'd probably be the reason why I've never been offered to do apartment wrestling. You know, 
I know some people that have, and they made really good money. And I'm thinking, well, you do stay clothed. I mean, I don't really know what the guy that bought the tape is doing with that tape. <laughs> if I make good enough money, might as well. <laughs> if I never got the offer. Just start sending feelers out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're, let's jump to nowadays. Sure. The NWA. How did that come about? And how did that come about for you? And I'm trying to get my, so since COVID, my my time frame is crap anymore. I, I believe it was in 2019. Yes. So at the end of 2018, I had hurt my neck, not like broken or anything, but I had a uh, herniated a disc or two. Oh man. So I was having to do what's called spinal decompression therapy, where they hook you up to a machine and stretch your neck stretch. out. Because I was losing feeling in my arm and stuff. It got pretty scary. Uh, so it took like six months to rehab that. So here we are, beginning of 2019. And I, no, excuse me, beginning of 2020. My bad. See, there it is, dates. Um, I had like two matches, and then the world shuts down. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm like, I just came back from a six month injury, and everything's done. And I, get, I got married, and I'm like, I don't know about this wrestling thing, man. I'm like, I'm getting older. Body's obviously not holding up like it should. I also wasn't taking care of myself the best. Uh, so I just, you know, I was just riding out COVID, seeing what happened. And I'd occasionally go, are you guys familiar with Kerry Awful? I know the he, name. He was a member of the Carnies or Team IOU at one point. That sounds very familiar. Familiar. I, I, can't, okay. put a, I can't put a face with it, though. So he, he runs a, a, a training school in Tennessee called Crux Wrestling Academy. And I just go down there to roll around. It's a different way to stay in shape because I get myself in shape just for health reasons because I let myself get, get in kind of bad health. Uh, so I was just rolling around. It's a fun way to get in shape. I hate cardio. So, hey, I'll run drills. And I got a phone call from a New Jersey area code and immediately kayfabed it. <laughs> I don't know anybody in Jersey. Right. Bye. I get a text message right after, roll back out of the ring. Hey, this is Pat Kenny with the NWA wanting to see if you'd be interested in coming in. Please call me. What? So I grab the phone, run outside. Uh, and that's kind of how I got hooked up. Like, I was, dude, I was hanging up my boots. Like, I was just rolling around to have fun. Like, I like teaching. So I'd come out and help carry out. But I wouldn't, I was, you know, I told my wife, I, I brought my, my last pair of boots, my last pair of tights. If wrestling doesn't come back, I'm good. Wow. And I've bought a couple of pairs of boots, a few pairs of tights <laughs> since then because I got a phone call. Um, as far as how that came about from there, because it seems out of nowhere, at the end of 2019, while I was kind of jacked up, uh, a buddy of mine was providing the ring and stuff for the NWA tapings. He said, you want to come and work, work backstage? I go, sure. So I came and wore a tie and worked backstage and was horribly out of my element, <laughs> specifically the tie. Um, previous to that, in 2012, I did a gut check in uh, Gainesville, Georgia, for TNA. The agent for that gut check was Pat Kenny. So between knowing a couple guys on the NWA roster and Pat remembering me from 2012, they gave me a call. Well, that's cool. That's awesome. It was out of nowhere, bro. I was, boot, boots were literally at the top of the closet. <laughs> they weren't <laughs> the bottom where they were. They were in the top of the closet, wow. like packed up. Um, so... Um, you you also you've trained some people ha- have you not um, yeah yeah um, I love, love training man I, I yeah. first started training probably before I should have I, I first started training as like an assistant trainer though so bump dummy glorified right like I've been Chase Stevens bump dummy I've been Dutch Mantel's bump dummy um, but then the first time I actually trained on my own I, I was put in charge in like 20 2014, uh, yeah, 2014 in a small company in, in Tennessee, and I was their trainer. And they only had a couple people. It was like second generation guys, you know. And, and uh, but then 20, and again, my years, 2015 or 16, Crimson opened up the Tried and True Academy in Clarksville, and uh, we we had quite a few guys go through there. And I do the uh, when it first started, we we're only going to have one course, and then we decided to have like an intermediate and advanced. So I would do the beginners course. Um, the intermediate and advanced would either be uh, versus Crazy Steve 
Uh, and then when Steve got married and moved, it became Tom Latter. And so we kind of just all worked together in doing that. Right. And, and in a way, Tried tri and True almost became the kind of the developmental territory for the NWA is what, what it seemed like to me. Because, you know, you had... Yeah. yeah because you had the first uh, the first episode. I remember seeing uh, uh, Mims was on that episode, and so was a few. And those were tried and true guys. Like, mm -hmm. um, so is there is there still a pretty good relationship with tried and true and, and NWA yeah. as, as that? Yeah. I, so I can, I can, So tr the tried and true school was a casualty of COVID, um, unfortunately. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, guys who who went through there that are on. Uh, NWA TV right now. Rush Freeman, mm -hmm. uh, Mims. Uh, I don't. If you're familiar with uh, Devin Graves, Dev the Dog, Big Daddy Dev. Yeah, uh, I've seen him. He's he's in it. Uh, let's see, Deontay Marshall. Since some of these guys have done more there um, than others, but Deontay Marshall, Danny White, who was in that first match with Mims, he was his partner mm -hmm. who got. Germaned out out of his soul in that match, and then power bombed immediately after out of his soul. <laughs> um, and we've had some other guys who've like done here and there and stuff like that, but the ones who have been used semi regularly, right there, yeah, straight out of mm -hmm. Tried and True Pro. Yeah, because uh, I, I the first uh, was it power was it first or second power trip I went to. It was I think the second. One. It was Tried and True, and uh, I got to see mm, yeah. Uh, um, is uh, Eric Jackson? Is he tried and true? Yes, yes, yeah, Eric. Yeah. I forgot about Eric. Yeah, Eric's Eric gonna hate Eric. me for that. <laughs> well, we won't tell him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Sains too recently had a match with Homicide. Mm -hmm. He's out of, of yeah. tried and true. Yeah, so uh, yeah, because Rush had mentioned that that you train help train him and and you know he's really uh, oh he's telling people that man oh, yeah. yeah I know right <laughs> yeah. I know well he's trying to get the rub he's trying to get the rub for sure <laughs> um, so you. You're now in a in a tag team called the Ill Begotten. My B boys, Ill Begotten, baby. Absolutely, and so you've been having quite an angle, quite a quite a, a feud with. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of their name right now. Sal Renaro. The Dirty MFers. Huh. The Musically Faithful. Y yeah. 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 How how's that how's that going? Uh well. They attempted to kill my tag partner. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they they attempted to cripple my manager. That's from the pond. And the big goof tried to stab me in the eye with a tire iron. So, uh, not the best. It's not going great. No, no. <laughs> no, uh, not, really. not not the best time. And uh, we haven't got a receipt. So, uh, <laughs> but we haven't forgotten. Right. Right. We That's... just haven't had a chance to get our receipt yet. Yeah. And magically, we're never touching on NWA TV anymore after, you know, at least attempted manslaughter. So, huh. I don't know. I blame Medusa. Oh, well, uh, Always yeah. blame Medusa. Always blame Medusa, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of a rule, I guess. <laughs> so, Danny Deals is, is your manager, correct? Yes, good. Yeah. Um, what type of deals can he get me? Well, every, every Monday night, uh, I'm not going to try not to plug a pot, another podcast, but every Monday night they, they do This is the NWA, and every Monday night he has merchandise deals. Okay. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, we, we might have to get Danny deals on, on here so we can talk one-on-one -on -one for sure. Man, listen, li this is legitimately outside of everything. There is nobody who tells a better story than Danny deals. Really? There's been many times where he hasn't been booked, and he's like, can I just ride with you? And I'm like, yes, because this four-hour drive will go over in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And it's he's hilarious. He, there's a reason he's a manager, because he can talk like nobody. And it's all just, bro, it's, he's so quick. And he'll tell you some of the most unbelievable stories, and they're true. And he just has this way of telling them. Him and Marche Rocket are, are right there with just right. being very entertaining. That's how it is, like, traveling with Rip. Like, I can't breathe. <laughs> when, yeah, when Rip yeah. is talking, you just can't, you just laugh the I whole time. I wish I could just record it, but then we for sure would get canceled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, Vic the Bruiser, I've only met Rip one time, oh, but Vic, Vic the Bruiser told me a lot of Rip stories. <laughs> yep. Vic, it's all, I mean, it's all true. Yeah, guarantee it. It's the last trip we did, like, I could not. Because he always travels with Scott Romer, the son-in-law of Dick the Bruiser, and like, 
they were just back and forth and it was just I could probably tell you off the camera. You gotta drive home like this. <laughs> anyway. But uh, it, it was, uh, Rip doesn't hold anything back. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the future look like for Jeremiah Plunkett? Man, I don't know. <laughs> like, like I said, I'm just kind of writing this out. Uh, two years ago, I was <laughs> quitting the business, man. Right. And, and now I just, I always feel like I'm, I'm on borrowed time. Um, that sounds way darker than I mean it to sound, uh, but that's the only term I could think of. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. I, I, I'm taking way better care of my body. I think I've got some good years left in me, uh, and I'm going to ride it out as long as I can. Got some punches left in the bump garden. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know about bumps. No, but <laughs> there's some, there's some still in there. <laughs> that's why stick with the tag team stuff. Make the partner do all the bumps. Yeah, listen, I got a partner who is 10 years younger than me. Genius. You think that wasn't by design? Genius. Exactly. Genius, absolutely. But still, uh, somehow I always take the hot tag. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> so if you had advice for anybody getting into the business, what would it be? Oh, man, I wanted to say funny stuff. But uh, legitimately, and this is one thing I didn't do, I would get an education. Um, not necessarily college. I'm not one of these guys who's like, you need a four year degree, but just have something. Like trade school, something. I, I've lucked out, but not everyone does. In fact, most people don't. And I hate seeing these guys who, man, this will sound really downer, but who they're one blown tire away from losing everything. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's I've never heard that statement before. But that one blown tire from losing everything. Yeah, that's 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 very real, and that's very. And, good and I mean, hey, don't get me wrong. Like I've done the struggle and barely made any money and slept in my car, and I and I've done that. And I think you should still do that, but I, you should always have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. um, Ten years ago, if I would have broken my neck, I would be screwed. You know, so have something to fall back on. Um, find a reputable trainer. Uh, I'm not saying they have to be a, a you know former WWF superstar, but you can watch their stuff, mm -hmm. especially in this day and age. Yeah. Hey, you want to train me? Send me four or five matches. If I don't know your if I don't know your name, send me four or five matches and let me watch your wrestling and see if I want to wrestle like you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. You got anything else you'd like to ask? Yeah. Uh, oh. So what, how, where do you see yourself in the NWA going forward? Like what's the ultimate goal in the NWA? My 100% focus right now is, is getting this deal with Alex and Tony. Because, oh, uh, Danny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and read. His, okay. his, his Twitter is Tony, so whatever. Okay. Um, but... Is is getting this and put, getting seeing how far this will go. Legitimately, deals is one of my closest friends. Alex Taylor is legitimately one of my closest friends. So right now, I am being paid to play with my closest friends and to travel with my closest friends. Right. I I can't ask for anything better. So I'll do whatever I can to keep this together. And not only that, Alex is ten years younger than me. So like at some point, my bump card is going to be full. And his won't be so if like somehow together he can get on a different platform and then i have to drop off because i'm old and crippled he'll be at a bigger platform i'm not saying i'm getting there i'm taking half the bumps to get him there <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah that's yeah for sure that's that's a good way to look at it you oh know, yeah for sure you know ride the wave for sure that's man that, that's a, everything after 2020 i feel like it's extra because i was ready to be done mm -hmm. So I just want to do extra to the best of my ability and at some point be like, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'll always still be involved in wrestling. I'm too addicted not to. Right. Yeah. But but I am finally smart enough to go, eh, I'm not going to be taking bumps when I'm 50. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, on behalf of Brian and myself, I want to say thank you for coming on. Um, I know it's been, we've been trying to get uh, – Life is busy. Life is crazy. We've been trying to connect for a while. And I'm happy that we, you know, finally got the time to speak with you. And um, 
thank you for everything you've done for the wrestling business because you know everybody has uh, contributes to it and um, yours has definitely been a positive one I do I do uh, I'm very entertained watching you in the ring and um, you know I, I as Brian knows I believe NWA is professional wrestling in a world full of sports entertainment and I appreciate that so thank you uh, man, you just said a whole lot of really nice things that, that <laughs> made me uh, <laughs> made me almost tear up. Uh, no, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, we have kind of been. Uh, what 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 was it that used to be on Craigslist? Missed uh, uh, misconnections. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, misconnections. There's been, been a lot of misconnection because of life stuff, and I, I hate that it that it, it took so long. But I'm glad we finally finally get were able to do it. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Have a good one. No, nah, you too, guys. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Morty. It's Brian. And thank you for watching today's episode of Developmentally Speaking. If you could, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to punch that bell icon so you can get notified whenever we go live or drop a new video every Monday. Well, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you on the next Developmentally Speaking.